Greetings, everyone. This is Fred Coulter. Welcome to Church at Home. Church at Home is sponsored by the Christian Biblical Church of God, and we are dedicated to restoring original Christianity for today and the truth of the Bible and the truth of the Word of God, the true Jesus. Who is he? How do we know him? Well, we've been going through this series in the Gospel of John to understand the true Jesus. And it's very interesting to note, remember some of the segments that I did where we talked about the Jesus Seminar? They reject the whole Gospel of John. I wonder why that is. Is it because it convicted them? Or is it because of hatred toward Jesus Christ? And why, in most Protestant churches, rarely except for John 3.16, is much of the Gospel of John taught. And yet it is the Gospel which tells us more about the real Jesus, the true Jesus, in a particularly spiritual way that is different from Matthew, Mark, and Luke. But nevertheless, it is the Word of God. Now we come to chapter 6 in the Gospel of John. And chapter 6 tells about the feeding of the 5,000. They had a few fish and loaves of bread. Jesus blessed it. And the disciples took it out and broke it off and gave it to everyone. They all ate and they were filled. And they gathered 12 baskets full of fragments from the barley loaves which were left over from what they had eaten. Now the people were impressed with this. Oh, they wanted, they wanted, you know, to make Jesus king. So Jesus escaped out of their hands. They couldn't find him. So the people on the other side of the Sea of Galilee didn't see Jesus leave. They saw him go on up into a mountain by himself to pray. And they were searching for him. They were searching for him because they wanted the free food. I mean, think of this. How fantastic it would be to have a man who could perform the miracle of taking a few loaves of bread and a few fish and feed 5,000. Why, think if we made him king, what he would do for us. Oh, they really wanted that food. Now, then they decided, well, somehow Jesus got to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. So they got over there and they said, Master, how did you get here? Well, he told them, verse 26. And this is the way that most people are. They are entitlement seekers. Free food, free money, free this provided by the government, provided by the church, provided by the daycare centers, provided by the meals on wheels, and all of this sort of thing. Now, those are many good works that people do. And they serve a lot of people in the physical needs. But that does not equate to spirituality and Christianity, and that does not equate to doing the things required for eternal life. So Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, you do not seek me because you saw the miracles, but because you ate the bread and were satisfied. So Jesus then gave them an object lesson in this. Same way for us. Didn't Jesus say in Matthew, the sixth chapter, don't be anxious about anything, what we will eat, what we'll put on, what will happen to us? You trust in God, you look to him, he will provide. So here is the same thing. So he told these people, seeking him, verse 27, do not labor for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures unto eternal life, which the Son of Man shall give to you, for him has God the Father sealed. Now notice, everyone wants eternal life. Everyone wants to do something for God. Here's what they said. What shall we do in order that we ourselves may do the works of God? 
Oh, we're good people. We want to do the works of God. Yes, indeed. No, they wanted the food. And they wanted Jesus to continue performing the miracles for them so they could eat. Notice Jesus' answer. Verse 29, this is the work of God that you believe on him whom he has sent. That you believe on Jesus. And that belief is unto obedience. Isn't it interesting how many churches and people say, we got to do the work of God. We got to do the work of God. Well, what is the work of God? There are two things of the work of God. You believe in Jesus Christ and God's working in you to bring you conversion and prepare you for eternal life, and you become the workmanship of God, God's work in you is the work of God. Whatever ministers and preachers do, that's the work of the ministry. And what are they to preach? Well, Paul wrote, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, rebuke, exhort, encourage, for the time will come that they will not endure sound doctrine. Just like these people here. They wanted the food. Now, they didn't understand what Jesus said when he said the work of God is to believe on him whom he has sent. That is, to believe on Jesus whom the Father has sent. Notice how the people responded. What sign will you perform that we may see it and believe you? What work will you do? They wanted a magician because they looked at what Jesus did with the miracle of feeding the 5,000. Oh, what a miracle. He did this by magic. Let's see him do it again. So they continued and said, Our fathers ate manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread to eat that came down from heaven. And that's what we want. We want manna every day. Hey, look, I won't have to go work. All I just have to do is go out and pick it up off the ground. See, entitlement people. Then Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who came down from heaven and gives life to the world. Now, they didn't have a clue as to what he was saying. But he was talking about his mission. He was talking about the purpose of his ministry, the purpose of preaching the gospel, to teach and to preach the truth of God and to help people understand it so they can repent. So they said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. Now, you see, it doesn't come that easy. And you're not entitled to it because God gave you a gift. He gave them the gift of eating the meal. Now they felt, well, we're entitled to this. We want this. Yes, this is an important man. We want to make him king so he can feed us continually. Jesus said to them, I, Jesus, am the bread of life. The one who comes to me shall never hunger, and the one who believes in me shall never thirst at any time. Now, this is a whole outline of Christian growth and understanding. We need to, with the Word of God, that is the spiritual food for us. Also, this gets into talking about the basis for the Christian Passover. Now, that may sound like a contradiction to some people, but there is a New Testament Christian Passover. And if you order the book, Occult Holidays or God's Holy Days, which, you have an outline and summary of the Passover Old Testament and New Testament. So what we're seeing here is Jesus was talking about himself, the bread that came down from heaven. But notice what this requires. But as I said to you, you have also seen me, yet you do not believe me. 
Do you believe Jesus Christ? Do you believe his teachings? Are you walking in the footsteps of Jesus? Or are you walking in the footsteps of a religion? Or are you walking in the footsteps of your own opinion? Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God shall man live. Do you do that? Let's read on here and see. All whom the Father gives me shall come to me, the one who comes to me I will in no wise cast out. That is, if you come to Christ on his terms, not your terms, not your thoughts and feelings, but the leading of the Holy Spirit to convict you to understand the word of God and to repent and come to him. That's how you come to Christ. Verse 38, notice, very key important verse in understanding who Jesus was. And I want you to hearken back to where we began this in John 1 and verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And not anything came into being that he did not create. Now, it's getting down to who the real Jesus is here. Verse 38, I did not come down from heaven to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. Where did Jesus come from? Heaven. And didn't we read the verse where John wrote to clarify about eternal life? That no one has ascended to heaven except the Son of Man who is from heaven and who is now in the bosom of the Father when he wrote that, so that it would stop dead cold the notion of immortal souls going to heaven. Now, the whole Catholic Church is based upon praying to saints, is it not? Claiming they are in heaven? When John wrote, no one has ascended to heaven except the Son of Man, who is in heaven. Now, verse 39, And this is the will of the Father who sent me, that of all whom he has given me, I should not lose any, but should raise them up in the last day. That's the resurrection. The Bible talks about the resurrection. Well, you go to cbcg.org, and you download the sermon, What is the State of the Dead? That'll clarify it for you, because too many people believe they're going to heaven or they're going to hell. And the midway point is purgatory. And that merchandises people. Let's continue on. Verse 40, And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Now, we can't physically see Jesus today, but we can learn of the true Jesus in the Gospels. That's what we're doing here in the Gospel of John, to understand who the true Jesus really is. Now, notice the Jews really didn't understand what Jesus was saying, so they were complaining. Verse 41, then the Jews were complaining against him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, well, we know this guy. Verse 42, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know, why then does he say, I came down from heaven? That's a hard thing to say. Now, here's a very important verse because they were complaining. Verse 44, no one can come to me unless the Father who has sent me draws him. This is the whole key concerning the beginning of true Christianity, right here. It's not because you go to church 
and you walk down the sawdust trail and give your heart to the Lord. Well, they don't even require you to do that now. All you have to do is stand where you are and then repeat the simple prayer. You are saved and born again. Not so. That's a lie. They may have an emotional experience. They may have heard something of the name of Jesus, but that's not how it comes. In order for you to be a true Christian, according to the Word of God, it must begin with God the Father dealing in your life because you were seeking God with all your heart and mind and soul and being. Because Jesus said, Knock, and it shall be opened. Seek, and you shall find. Ask, and it shall be given. But you have to do all of that in faith. That's why church at home. Today, there's so much confusion in the world that the only place that you can really begin is at home to get out your Bible, to study your Bible, to follow along with the Church at Home video segments that we have, and then go to cbcg.org, and there you have such a wealth of information that it is greater than any seminary can possibly give. But God the Father must act in your life first. As you knock, as you seek, and as you ask. Now, verse 44 is a key scripture because it tells us it is not the ones who desire eternal life alone, but want to do it their way. Never happen. Never will. There has to be a spiritual intervention in your life because of repentance. Verse 44, no one can come to me unless the Father who has sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Now, I want to read that again because it's very important. There are a lot of people who profess Jesus. There are a lot of people who think, well, as, as, as soon as I find out about Jesus, I better find a church to go to. Because Christianity today looks at the churched and the unchurched, which is a gross mistake. It's the converted and the unconverted. And the only way that you can come to conversion is that the Father must begin to draw you first. And there is no way you can come to the true, real Jesus as we find in the Gospels and in the Gospel of John here, unless the Father intervenes in your life to draw you. Now, you have to respond, because many are called, but few are chosen. And that drawing is the calling. And if you don't follow along and continue with that drawing, then God the Father is going to cease drawing you. If you insist on your own way and your own traditions and your own religion, that drawing stops. You must respond to God. And it's God the Father, the great sovereign in the universe, that is doing this. You cannot come to Christ unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Now, that's what John is teaching. Now, a lot of people don't like that because this verse flies in the face of the churched and unchurched because it is a personal relationship between God the Father, Jesus Christ, and you. That's why there has to be repentance and baptism and receiving of the Holy Spirit as you yield to God as he is calling. Now, notice what else happens. It is written in the prophets, they shall all be taught by God. 
Therefore, everyone who has heard from the Father and has learned comes to me. In other words, God the Father then begins to open your mind, begins to give you the desire to do what is right, begins to give you the understanding of the Scriptures, and if you continue in it, then you are drawn to Christ. And it is the Father, through the Holy Spirit, that is teaching us. Is that not how Jesus was taught? Yes, indeed. We already saw that. He was taught of the Father. He was commanded by the Father. He did what he saw the Father do. So it is God the Father who is drawing you. This is why Jesus came to reveal the Father. Because you have to have both together. You can't have the Father alone on one hand without Jesus Christ. And you can't have Jesus Christ on the other hand without the Father. Now come over here to John 14 and verse 6. We've read this before, but now this will make much more sense and understanding to you. John 14, very important scripture, so that we see that it is God the Father and Jesus Christ who are working in the lives of those that they are calling. Verse 6, John 14. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So here is the combination work of God. The Father draws, the individual responds, and you come through Jesus Christ, who is our Savior, our sin offering, our high priest, our mediator, and our redeemer. And that's how you come to the Father. Notice it is the way, the truth, and the life. Now we'll have much more to say on this because the book of John is rich in great meaning and understanding and gives us a clear perspective as to who the real Jesus is. So once again, thank you for inviting me into your home. Remember to go to cbcg.org and download the sermons and material that is there. So this is Fred Coulter, till next time, saying so long, everyone.